Right, so uh, I will be uh, talking about our approach to make uh, spatial cell maps of molecular-defined cell types and uh, using our targeted in-situ sequencing. So first, uh, a description of the uh, data generation uh, method. It's um, a targeted approach where we first convert uh, RNA in cells into cDNA and then target a selection of genes, or cDNAs, uh, with padlock probes that become circularized in a strictly target-dependent manner if the target cDNA is present in a cell. So this can only happen if, if uh, both ends of these circularization probes end up with the cDNA and then can be, uh, is joined by a DNA ligase. So we barcode these um, um, probe molecules. We short uh, uh, sequence barcodes that we can decode with next generation sequencing within uh, the, the cells and tissues. Uh, so typically, for, uh, for cell mapping purpose, we, we target uh, maybe 100 uh, genes or so with one or several uh, padlock probes per gene, and then equip every gene with a certain molecular barcode. Right, so after this uh, large library of uh, probe molecules have interacted with their cDNA molecules in situ, uh, we amplify them within the cells um, uh, with rolling circle amplification because these circularized molecules now are, are suitable substrate for, for polymerase that can uh, copy the circular over and over again in a clonal fashion and uh, creating submicron sized uh, blobs of DNA with uh, uh, maybe a thousand copies of, of uh, the barcode sequence, clonally amplified. And then we uh, take it through and iterative process of, of uh, fluorescence, base-specific incorporation of fluorescence, and imaging, uh, destaining, incorporation of fluorescence, uh, imaging, destaining, and so on, very similar to the Murphy's approach for seeing a molecule uh, fish. Uh, so, what we want to achieve is, is basically uh, tr try to find, you know, put um, the different cell clusters defined by single cell RNA sequencing in, into the spatial context. So we want to, to place the different uh, cell uh, clusters into space and to draw uh, maps of, uh, of molecular defined cell types. So the way we go about it is uh, we select marker genes for the different clusters um, and uh, design probes for them, um, run it through the experiment, uh, generate molecular maps of, uh, in this case, 99 different uh, transcripts, uh, and then assign uh, reads or the transcript identities to individual cells in the tissue, and then compare this, the read content of this individual cell, uh, which one does it best match of the expectations from the uh, single cell RNA sequencing defined clusters. So we look at the marker combination appearing, appearing in each individual cell in the tissue and then match it uh, and, and give it the probability to belong to a certain cell cluster. So this, uh, with this combination of uh, marker genes in this cell, uh, we score it as a light blue uh, cell, this uh, cell cluster, and we put it into the map. So what we did here, uh, as a proof of concept, we targeted the interneurons of uh, um, CA1, hippocampus uh, uh, region CA1 in, in mouse brain. And um, it, it's uh, very well, so we targeted because it's very well studied. It's well known where all these different uh, uh, subtypes of interneurons are, are residing in the, in, the, in the hippocampus. So they form layered structure and, uh, and, and the different interneurons are expected to, to fall into these layers. And that is exactly what we see. Um, so we can validate our cell maps down to, to this level, uh, about uh, 15, 16 different interneurons where uh, the location is known, um, but we ha actually have information down deeper, down to uh, 40, 50 cell uh, type level. Um, we read about, oops, we read about uh, 20, 30 molecules per cell, and that seems to be enough to make these robust cell maps. And we have put a lot of efforts in validating this uh, cell map, and it, it uh, uh, looks very accurate. Uh, and in each cell, we find uh, about six or seven marker genes, and this is by design. 
So with this, we took it further and also made uh, maps of, of uh, all neurons in, uh, in isocortex, uh, both the uh, uh, excitatory and, uh, and the inhibitory neurons. And the excitatory neurons form these uh, well-known uh, layers in, in isocortex, uh, while interneurons are more uh, ha has a different kind of distribution. And we map down, we map very rare cells, sort of a handful of cells per section, up to several thousand of, of, uh, of uh, uh, cells in certain cell types per section. Per section. And yeah. Uh, so now we apply this in uh, human develop uh, in, in the HCA context. We uh, formed the consortium in Sweden uh, to, to provide um, uh, to contribute to a human cell uh, developmental uh, uh, developmental human cell atlas. Uh, so we're targeting um, we're, we're uh, targeting the first trimester uh, of human fetuses, and we have special. Uh, emphasis on brain, heart, lung, and also we'll also do whole embryos uh, at, at some point on, and map these organs into the organ or, or to the whole uh, organism. Um, it's based uh, uh, heavily on single cell RNA sequencing uh, done by Stian Linnarsson's uh, lab, and um, this will f um, and also spatial transcriptomics uh, data from Joachim Lundberg's uh, lab. And then we find the markers, so we can define the in-situ sequencing uh, 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 panels to map um, all the genes with single cell resolution. And in the end, we're, we're going to integrate this into uh, 3D models. Uh, and we're sort of getting there with the, with the heart. We're almost done. Uh, and here you see a, a cell map, a, a probabilistic cell map of the f uh, 15 um, single cell RNA sequencing defined cell types in a 6.5 week uh, uh, human heart, and I have the 4.5 on the on the computer. Um, so to summarize, it's a high throughput approach, uh, which we think is, is has the kind of throughput you, that you can also uh, start addressing uh, 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 patient uh, sample collections uh, because we're using 20x uh, imaging, so not like the 60x uh, imaging you would use in a single molecule fish setup. So we get much wider field imaging at the lower cost. It works uh, because of the signal amplification we're, we're having. It works nicely in, uh, in difficult human tumor, uh, tumor tissues that are formally fixed the paraffin embedded. And we can map also transcript isoforms of mutations. We're also making subclonal maps of, um, uh, of cancer cells based on their uh, somatic uh, mutation profile. Uh, right, so it's really in production mode, and we're now at uh, Science for Life Laboratory setting up a spatial omics facility where, where this uh, in situ sequencing is offered as a service, together with spatial transcriptomics and, uh, and codex. Thank you. So, thank you very much for this talk and other questions. Yeah, one over there. Hi, that, that was really interesting. I was wondering, so it's really cool to see that you can with in-situ sequencing now go to, to such a level of resolution. I was wondering though, if you want to reuse this, sort of do this potentially across multiple subjects, uh, what would be an optimal representation of that? Would we still store just multiple images or should we just as we do for single cell RNA-seq, where we store the clusters as cell annotated labels, something like that. Should we, in this case, store relative positions of the different cell types next to each other or, or something more complex? What, what is your, uh, your vision for that? Um, well, I, you know, you, you get the coordinates of all the cells and all the uh, different cell types, and you can actually remap the data if you get new single cell RNA sequencing uh, data, so you, you could sort of re annotate, uh, annotate your, uh, your, your tissue collections. I'm, I'm not really sure what, you, <laughs> what, you're, what you're asking. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking that if we want to make a disease atlas or something yeah. like that, right? We could show this relative positions for a particular subject, but yeah. if it's the same subject, even genetically identical, they would look different, right? Yeah. So there has to be some more generic yeah, yeah. property, I see, some I see type what of I mean. model yeah. extracted from yeah, top yeah, of yeah. that. No, I, I'm, I'm not really sure exactly how to describe these data and yeah. compare different uh, tissues, but I guess it would be 
Um, so in, in the database format, I'm, I'm not really sure. But the, it's a problem that pathology should have solved already, right? With respect to obviously yeah. now a smaller set of labels. Is Maybe. There some, something to be learned from that? Yeah. I actually have a, a question. As you know, single cell uh, profiling is uh, used to, for in, in uh, new cell type discovery. So trying to discover if you have you know, cell types that we didn't uh, know before. And uh, how uh, can you use uh, uh, spatial transcriptomics for that? Because I mean, I guess the, the idea that you have markers you can really see, depending on the position, how cells behave, uh, can help you define whether this is a new cell type whether these are like transitions, you know, neighboring cells come from the same precursor, so. Right, so I mean, this is, this is the kind of analysis we haven't really started working on, but of course that would be to study the interrelation between the different cell types and, and uh, see what, what we can learn from that. Uh, currently we're just uh, drawing the maps and uh, validate them, validating them to make sure that they're correct. Uh, but then to understand how these, um, why cells are located maybe in a certain configuration. This is the, maybe the next step.